You're listening to the Smash Bros. Cast, episode 48. I'm your host, N64Josh, my co-host and sparring partner, Nightcrawler. What's up, dude? Hey, how's it going? It is going good. And we got we got to we got a, we got a, we got a call in. Mikey be playing. What's going on? <laughs> going good. How are you guys? Doing good. Doing good. Real quick, Mikey, give us a do a little do a little plug. You do a little streaming, don't you? Yeah, I do a little streaming. I do on Mondays, Wednesdays, and then sometimes Saturdays. I know that doesn't sound amazing, but just <laughs> twitch.tv slash Mikey be playing. Right on. And right I play on. Variety, mostly Switch titles. It's a lot of fun. Cool. Cool. He's uh, he's a pretty mean inkling, and uh, he also, I mean, plays some Splatoon. <laughs> Big shocker, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, cool. Well, hey, guys, if you want to get yourself a free book from Audible, go to audibletrial.com slash SBC. The chair I'm sitting in from OPC. Go to n64josh.com slash OPC. You automatically save $10 at checkout. And my book, Another Castle, just launched. It is now available. You can pick up the audio version or the uh, or, or or just the the ebook if you want. If you go to n64josh.com slash another castle. All right, that's n64josh.com slash another castle. So with that, we're just gonna jump right into uh, right into some questions and tips and things like that. Uh, Mikey, you've you're you're uh, an elite smash right as far as the uh the gsp and everything yeah i made it yeah and so you were you were talking about that in the in the twitch chat here like what do you think what do you think is a factor there i know this sounds really dumb and simple but honestly the biggest thing i've played a lot of smashes and so maybe there's other things that are more nuanced that i don't know that i do but when people recover they usually um they usually guard and roll backwards, and then you can punish that roll backwards. And that's true, it seems like, for almost 80% of people I've beat lately. And so I just wait for them. They usually air dodge, land, roll backwards. I punish the roll backwards and then just keep doing air combos. And that's really the biggest little revelation I've had recently for myself to get me to elite. Yeah, well, it's, what's interesting is a few of the questions we have tonight, uh, a lot of the answers are going to boil down to watching your opponent and being able to uh punish their um their habits or their the the moves that they're doing over and over again so yeah it's a great advice i mean you you always want to be watching what your opponent's doing and figuring out the best way to to punish that and in, in my case i need and i talked about it a little bit before like getting uh getting getting more efficient at uh at punishing you know, making sure that it's not just a not just a single grab or something, but like you know, get that smash attack going or or something that can really uh, um, really do some damage or even possibly kill. So, because um, I'm sure if you're if you're picking up somebody off of a off of a roll, I mean, you, you pretty much can do whatever you'd like. I'm sure you've you've had plenty of final final smashes from that uh, that very thing, huh? Yeah, definitely. I think, like you said, watching your opponent is really key because I, like I said I say 80% I feel like roll backwards some people roll inwards and that's a great time to grab most characters have a good combo from their grab as well so if you, you can catch a YouTube video or something like that I watch Zero's YouTube on Inkling and he talks all about what grab to do at different percents and that really helped me as well oh good to know good to know that's awesome that is awesome so we're gonna jump down into our questions crawler you want to kick off the first question for us yeah so this is coming from uh street lamp kid in the discord uh so he just has a question asking uh how do you know when to shield versus when to dodge take us away crawler what do you, what do you got there uh i mean i think the biggest thing is when you know that there's going to be an attack that is that is blockable you're going to be in an advantage to hold that shield and then either potentially up up b if it's if it's punishable that way out of your shield um which we talked about a couple didn't we talk about that a couple weeks ago i think on the on the cast and then um but there's also just they'll have ending lag from whatever move that they're stuck punishing your shield and you can then monopolize on that time and and rack up some damage that way or even lead to a bigger combo um and then dodging is going to be important to 
recognize if you're at a vulnerable situation and you think that it can lead to you uh, not taking extreme damage or being able to possibly get to a ledge grab or something else to put yourself either to reset neutral or um, possibly at an advantage depending on how much landing lag you get with that that dodge um because it's not always a guarantee that you can land and get your shield up when you when you're wanting to but uh that dodge or roll um is is a good option there but then also because you can't pass through characters um unless you're in air in this game unlike in smash 4 uh that roll is a good way to make sure you pop out on the other side so just like we talked about with shield if you can if you can preemptively see the attack and get through as they're starting that attack, and then you can definitely have time to punish even uh, with a bigger smash attack uh, than just like a jab jab combo or, or a grab combo. You can, especially if that percent to kill, you uh, you have the time to charge that smash attack up if they're if they're stuck in a uh, jab animation or or something else. Mikey, what do you think? When's the uh... How do you know when to, to shield versus to dodge? I honestly feel like Crawler nailed it with a lot more detail than I think of it, but I guess he's been doing this a while. But I uh, I, uh, uh, I tend to air dodge a little too much, and I do get punished for it. And so I think if, if you can really get used to spacing correctly and holding your shield long enough, sometimes I make the mistake of jab combos and, like, Link has a a three hit smash attack or young link does. And I, I accidentally lose the shield. I think I've held it long enough. And then he gets me with that third strike. I make that kind of mistake all the time. But if you can just hold that shield, they almost always give you punishable frames after. So if you've spaced well enough, I think, um, and you're taking an attack, just make sure you hold your shield long enough and then attack those punishable frames. But I tend to air dodge a lot when I'm coming back to the stage. A lot of people, I mean, you do awesome uh, spikes, Josh, that a lot of people don't do. A lot of people just charge up a an attack on the ledge, and mm. that's so easy to read. And I usually just, you know, air dodge right through them, and then I can punish them while, you know, after they've done their smash attack, they have punishable frames. So those are the times I think are make the most sense. I don't know if that makes sense what I said, but yeah, for sure, for sure. Here's I'm gonna I'm gonna take it from the perspective of the stuff I do wrong all the time. Okay, so. To, to answer your question, I can tell, I, I know the right time for my opponent to shield is when they pick up on the fact, and I don't do it as much now, but I used to do it often, is I would dash attack when they were near the le near the edge. It was just something if they were near edge, I would try to dash attack, ho hoping that it would kick them up into the air and I could get my spike, right? That was, the, that was my thought process there, but what happens is I do it too often. They shield, now it's a free grab. Right. That's a, that's literally I'm not going to be able to do anything except for get punished for that. So the answer to your question is when to shield uh, uh, some of the time will be when you're reading your opponent who has done the same move a number of times. And then you can uh, uh, you can you can throw that shield, get them to be in a, uh, a the disadvantage state and you know get a grab off get a smash attack off whatever the case may be it's going to allow you to punish the other thing is i mean you know if you're it, it, if there's just a barrage of attacks or whatever like yeah you want of course you're going to want to throw that shield now i'm assuming when i see shield versus dodge i'm assuming spot dodge right and for me i don't do a lot of spot dodging but when i play characters like a real aggressive little mac I feel if you can if you can uh, read what he's doing, you could spot dodge and get a grab off him because he's so fast. He's so fast. So that spot dodge, getting him to miss his his punch and then being able to get a grab and, and hopefully throw him off stage is going to be a uh, a good uh, a good way to to get a stock off of Matt because he he's a character I struggle against. So that, that would be my thing is like both of those things are going to be situational based on what your opponent's doing. And so it's going to be good to to just, you know, really pay attention, watch what they're doing, 
just like we talked about at the beginning of the show, like if they're if they're rolling things like that, like what do they do after that roll? Do they roll and then do the same attack? Throw your shield, then you can get that grab if you miss your initial punish. You know, there's 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 still an opportunity there to um, to punish them for being uh, too predictable. <clears throat> And I, I forget where I heard this. It might have been on a YouTube video or a different podcast. Um, but I heard that you want to, if, if you are reading your opponent and you can see that they're going to attack, you want to shield. But if you know that they're going to grab, you want to spot dodge because then they'll, they'll whiff and then you can turn around and grab them right off the bat. So it's kind of that, that read, read option, kind of knowing if you can, because if you're shielding, they obviously can grab you, and that's something that you want to um, try to avoid. And so, if you're if you're seeing that they're coming in for lots of grabs, and they're they're at that distance, you can potentially spot dodge as they're doing that, and then you can turn the tables on them and and come out. But if you know that they're going to attack, you want to shield so that then they have ending lag on their their attack, and then you can punish that. So it's all about finding things that can be punished. And I think one other thing to add to that is if you are in in a in the situation where you have shielded and they have they have attack shield all you got to do is press a to get that grab right and I, the reason i bring that up is because there's times i forget that i go for my grab button instead of just tapping a or if you know that spot dodge is coming as long as you're holding shield you just tap down it's not like you have to hit hit shield and then down to initiate that thing you know it's, it's just as simple as pressing down on your stick while you're while you're shielding that'll be your spot dodge so um, if that's not stuff that comes real natural to you, get into the lab and, and start, to uh, start, to uh, start working that stuff. So, uh, next up we have soundscape. It says, I'm having a hard time learning to do short hop attacks. Any tips, Mikey, you want to kick us off with that one? You know, I'm not a master at short hop attacks, but I think the best way I found is on the GameCube controller, you know, you have jump on X and Y. Mm -hmm. I mostly just slide straight from X to a and then i'm holding the direction i want a short hop attack it's blue cena a down air is really important for a short hop and so i i get run in slide from x to a and hold down and it, it works just about every time it took me a little bit of practice in the training mode but once i got it down i can i can do just about anything i still struggle a little bit with neutral air while running with the way i do it but I just think sliding from X to A in most cases is the safest way to make sure you do a short hop and not a full hop. Gotcha. Gotcha. Crawler, you got anything to add to that? Yeah. So when, when we were talking about short hops, I was just thumbing through right here before the show and the, the primer guy talks about short hops and it's just, it's making sure that you're releasing the jump button before the takeoff frames are completed. And so that's what triggers it. So and it um, it also talks that the the jump for a full hop and a short hop take the same amount of frames and they take the same amount. Of, so that's equals the same amount of time. It just changes distance traveled like vertically and you can just use it to be more aggressive. Um, I still find the way, way to be most consistent with it is the, the shortcut, which is just attack and jump at the same time which is kind of what Mikey was talking about. Um, he has, so you have X still mapped as a jump button. Mikey, is that correct? Are you, using right. pro, are you using Pro or GameCube or what do you use? I use a GameCube, so it makes more sense on the GameCube controller. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. X to A doesn't make as much sense on the Pro controller. On the GameCube, yeah, I mean, it's an easy slide. Yeah, it just all depends. Like I, I have X's grab on my GameCube controller, so I use A and Y, which is I'm able just to press all with one just one fat thumb if i press it down i can do it um but it's it all just kind of depends on how you have your controller mapped out how you want to do it josh has jump on trigger now so he can do trigger and a at the same time is that right josh correct yep oh, and yeah. trigger and, and c stick yeah so it, it all just kind of depends on how you have it mapped but the short the shortcut if you can work it out in the lab or even if if you just find success as you're as you're playing to try it out that's that's a way to do it but if you want to be super consistent with doing it uh just just with just with the jump button that takes uh kind of a little bit of finesse and a lot of training to uh to make sure that you're consistent with release it's just make sure you're just releasing that button right as soon as those those takeoff frames end 
so that you guarantee that short hop. Can I, I, can I interject just one brief thing? Yeah. I thought um, it's really important to just find a, a control set that's comfortable for you. I think I've watched about five pros say, this is the best way to set up your Smash controller. Right. And they're all different. Yep. And so I just tried a, a few of them and found one that worked for me. And so I just recommend you guys that are listening do that as well. If you're having a hard time doing some inputs, look at how like Zero sets up his controller or Armada. I think those are the two main ones I saw and then it recommended me to others after I watched those. But anyway, there's all kinds of ways to do it. There's no, this is the best way I feel like at least. It's it's personal preference, you know. Chat's saying push the jump button like it's hot. Thank you, Beasters. <laughs> <laughs> so and and really like every time i'm playing i'm practicing short hops whether i'm in training mode or i'm i'm doing viewer battles or whatever like it's it's something that that for me i have to be i have to be pretty aware of and it doesn't just just come supernatural to me i'm getting it's it's getting uh it's getting better every time i play so it's it's one of those things like it was way easier in uh, in Smash 4, but I think a lot of things were easier in Smash 4 because the game was so slow, you know? So, like, just, uh, again, I mean, it's a cliche, but just practice. Practice, practice, practice. Get in the training mode and practice. Practice it with a with a friend. Practice every time. Like, just just start to nail those those uh, those short hops. And, you know, eventually, it's going to be second nature to you. So just stick with it and you'll get it. You'll get it. So... Let's see here. Next up is from Dark Mind. It says, I don't have a mic, but I do have a question. Um, I do enjoy playing Doc, as in Dr. Mario, but I had a hard time consistently getting in on swords effectively. As a Mario player, any advice on this? And so, yeah, swords. Y you know what? It, a lot of it is going to... A lot of it's going to boil down to... Uh, um, reading reading what they're doing and looking for your opportunity right they they outrange you so you have to be able to get in close um i would say you want to make sure that you've spent time in the lab with your combos so that when you do get a hold of them you're applying maximum damage possible okay you want to be able to to do as much damage as possible and uh take advantage of your of your uh, projectiles like throw pills until you know they overdose you know just like just just keep them coming out like spam that thing and then when they try to get close to you and can't can't handle it anymore punish them for that you know kind of you know bait them use your use your pills as a way to to get them to uh uh, to shield so that you can get in for for a grab and get a combo started or hit him with that tornado. You know, there's uh, Doc's got some some pretty powerful attacks. So, you know that that would be my my advice is just you're gonna want to do some things to really uh, just bait them into uh, um, uh, to making mistakes and and then punish them for it. So that's you know I, crawler i know you you've often played as a sword mm -hmm. character against against my mario what uh what, do you pick up on anything that you see working uh the thing that i think that works the most is it, sword attacks usually have some kind of charge up where versus like mario and dr mario i feel like their attacks are they come out a lot quicker and so when a sword a sword user is charging up that attack if you are leading in just like josh was talking about finding your opportunity if you um if you can lead with your pill or like regular regular mario with a fireball it can disrupt that charge and then give you extra frames there that you can start landing your attacks so that's the uh i think and then just in general if you get them off the stage spam it because if you can get if you can get them hit while while their their momentum is coming up and they're thinking that they have that opportunity, it can completely throw out their timing and then you're able just to gimp them off stage. Because edge guarding in this game, I think, is the key to victory. Uh, a lot of times, it's you can just like in melee. I feel like you can take a stock with twenty percent gone if you know how to edge guard correctly. So it's it's all about just 
finding your opportunity and using your tool set to to take advantage where you can. The other thing I would say too is like put yourself in a position that keeps you just just a little out of reach. The more that they they whiff the sword attacks, the more they're going to be uh, the more you're going to be able to punish that, right? So like act like you're coming in for an attack, but stop it. Right. Just just maybe you're going to maybe you throw a handful of 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 short hop back airs to kind of just poke its shield or whatever, and then just throw a back air that you or throw a, a short hop. But don't uh, don't back air when they when they when they pop that shield, get that grab. You know, the other thing, too, is like if if you're seeing them use a, a, a certain move over and over again or whatever put yourself just out of range and if they they whiff that thing hit them with a hit them with a smash attack i'm not i i think dr mario's forward smash is pretty similar to uh to regular mario and what happens is i feel like you can sometimes hit the the sword becomes part of the hitbox at that point and you're able to actually get a kill um further than what you normally would so you know just position yourself as as safe as possible mikey you got any you got any tips against swords being being inkling yeah, I'm not a Doc Mario player, so it's not as specific. But yeah, uh, swords are a trouble for Inkling. And just like you guys kind of discussed, I think the biggest key for me playing really good sword players online is kind of baiting out their attacks. Because a lot of them just want to do like relentless combos and then counters and things like that. But man, once you can break their flow and kind of bait out an attack and they whiff it, then you go on your tirade of combos and... So I usually kind of run up to them, just see what they're going to do. What, Run up, run back. What will they do if I dash at them? What will I do if I jump in the air at them? Just kind of get a feel for what they, how they like to play and then strategize how to bait out what they want to do into something you can make a combo out of. And sometimes I've seen like Crom and Roy and stuff. I've seen just nothing but nares all day long. It's just the same thing <laughs> over and over again. And so, you know, it's just kind of like – like hit just true. Sp spam those those pills or fireballs or whatever you got just just utilize those projectiles and and just annoy them with them till they 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 try something else like just stay away just stay yeah. away use platforms and more more stationary swords like ganondorf the, just, uh, those are the ones especially to bait out because he hits like a truck mm -hmm. so a lot of times i stress him out with an ink mine and if a lot of times they don't move, they just shield, and that's a great time to just run in and grab, run in and do something, just to kind of stress them out, throw off their flow. But... Or if you see that kick or that sword come out, roll through it and get ready to punish it on the other side, because it's usually just a one-sided attack. Yep. Next up, we have Dude Named Paul. This is my first Smash game. What should I work on? So... We're going to do, let's just give, let's just kind of, we'll just uh, real quick go around the table. I'm going to say, first off, uh, get in the lab and understand all the moves of your character. Watch the tutorial at the beginning of the game and, and make sure you understand everything that it's talking about. Right. I, I feel like there's, there's, there's a lot of people that, that don't even watch that thing, not realizing that it's full of information. Watch the tutorial at the beginning, learn how to nair, learn how to uh, back air, and just really can, learn the moveset for your character. And you can rewatch the video under uh, Vault, uh, Vault, I think. Games is and where more, it is. and then Vault. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. I think it's in Vault, just Vault. Okay. Um, but then my recommendation is. Uh, there are some really good videos out there, especially uh, Izaw Smash has, uh, I think he's got a three or four part series now on just progressing through uh, Smash. So he's got a beginner's guide to Smash, intermediate, advanced, and I think he just put out a master he did. Uh, video. He did. And, so, and if you go to n64josh.com slash smash videos, they're all right there. I am compiling a list of all the best videos and they're all going to be, it's like to be a one-stop shop for you. So, um, so go to n64josh.com slash smash videos. Yeah. I mean that, that's my best recommendation. I mean, short of, I mean, just getting in there and like Josh said in the lab, but even even after watching that video, it's going to recommend that you be in the lab doing doing what he's talking about. So, um, yeah, just watching watching video, watching people play. You don't need to watch high level play, but you need to watch 
smart, competent play. And, and then it's also a matter of under, so like that, that uh, tutorial video, you need to kind of understand some of the lingo so you can understand the videos and comprehend and, and process them more so that you can then turn it into usable information that you then know button inputs and all that kind of lingo comes with. Um, so it's important to know that. But other than that, I think just starting with those videos is a really good tool to uh, just advance your gameplay. Mikey, how about you? The only thing I have to add is when I was a new player, I way overused special attacks and smash attack. I thought that was just about the cream of the crop is choose someone with the coolest smash attack and an obnoxious special attack and just learn how valuable just plain old attack button is. Your neutral airs, your up airs, your forward airs, those are really the cream of the crop that get you into combos and doing other things. So just a simple tip, but... Specials and smashes are for, for killing and uh, regular the airs and tilts are for racking up damage. Okay. And uh, let's see here. This is, uh, we got, we got a couple of Mebo stuff, but we're just about the half hour mark. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll get into these on the, on Friday's episode and uh, we'll wrap this up right here. So uh, Mikey, where can people uh, find you again? Well, they can find me on twitch.tv slash Mikey B playing. I stream, and then that's the same thing for Twitter. Those are kind of my two main spaces. Right on, right on. Crawler, how about you, buddy? Uh, you guys can find me hanging out in Josh's Discord. I know I know you guys have been coming in. We, I think we had another, like, six or seven people today even. Um, so keep it coming. Keep coming. Say hello. There's plenty of games, and uh, there's LFG channels and game chat channels and uh, audio channels, all sorts of stuff. Uh, that's n 64 Josh in 64 josh.com slash discord we'll get you the invite uh i'm also on twitter twitter and twitch at nightcrawler724 nightcrawlers without the e and uh yeah come hang out we did some viewer battles today and then uh sent the love over here to josh's channel so yeah come hang out and we'll get some games in right on guys you can follow me on twitch twitter instagram facebook snapchat youtube all the above is N64 Josh. You can check that out. The la I want to mention again my book, Another Castle. It's all about just enjoying the journey of life, uh, how I've dealt with depression, and uh, kind of just how Super Mario Bros. illustrates uh, just life. And so it was a, just an absolute pleasure to write. I had a blast with it. And if you want to check it out, there's an audio version or the ebook. You can go to n64josh.com slash another castle. Uh, Remember to rate and, re rate and review on iTunes. We greatly appreciate that. Like Crawler said, come hang out in the Discord. We got lots of good people. I'm streaming on Twitch like like uh, at least five days a week. And so you want to come do some viewer battles? That's going to happen at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time pretty much every day. So, and of course, we record we record our main show Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you, uh, if you want to come join us for that. So thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Yep. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for letting me call in. Right on, brother. <laughs>